Good morning and welcome to the 30th anniversary seminar of Systems Analysis Laboratory. Now for the first speaker of the day. He is Professor Raimo Hämäläinen. Raimo did his studies at Helsinki University of Technology and became a professor here in 1981. He is the founder and director of Systems Analysis Laboratory. Raimo has done research on systems of various kinds, ranging from physiological and industrial systems to energy and environmental systems. Welcome, Raimo. Good morning, everybody. Great to have you here, and I hope you will enjoy this morning. We are the Systems Analysis Lab, and we hope that we can give uh, perspectives on the world of systems with different talks to this morning and uh, this way celebrate, uh, celebrate the world of systems. And I would especially like to welcome uh, Peter Senger, our friend and, and keynote speaker to, to this event, as well as all the alumni I see met here. So let's go on. So why systems? We are all embedded in systems. Systems can be environment, the environment, your family, climate, societies, and organizations. And the key factor, key characteristics of systems is that the whole is more than it, the sum of its parts. So that's why it creates something, and uh, that's uh, of interest to us, and that's why we live in and cre we create systems. So, of course, when we are in systems, we want to be better in systems. Systems evolve in time. Systems can be complex. Systems can be complicated. But, in fact, we do create systems to provide leverage. So, these sort of negative connotations to systems uh, often, uh, are the ones that are said, but actually, systems are keys to make life better. So, that's the sort of the theme of the, of the day, that uh, seeing thinking and acting with systems is the way to find better structures and uh, better behavior. The systems toolkit, uh, what we, for, for example, here in an engineering school, have developed uh, our mathematical models of uh, all kinds, identification, simulation, statistics, optimization, games, decision models, efficiency analysis, and so on. So all these tools have been developed to create better decisions and improved understanding. But it's not only the tools. We, we need to know how to use tools. So, so it's about the betterment of decisions. And uh, the field uh, has many names. We use the word operations research. And the re this field uh, refers to itself often by the name the science of better. So our goal is to make things better. In the 20th century, can be called the century of systems. In the old times, uh, this Cartesian analytic way of thinking was the first way of uh, <coughs> making understanding of things happening. But uh, in the last century, things had to be start to understand biology, the nature, the complex and industrial systems that we are creating. So we needed a systems approach. And I'm going to rush through now a series of landmark uh, people during this, uh, this uh, last century and come back to what we have been doing. So the communities that relate to systems have uh, different names. The system is in the focus, systems thinking, systems theory, system science, system dynamics, and so on. We use the terminology operations research and systems analysis. Each come, come to the world system from a different angle, but and there's more, but this, uh, this is how world develops that people have different names for the same thing. It's interesting that uh, the word system was not used in the very beginning. I think that uh, this uh, Alexander Bogdanov was one of the first uh, researchers to try to create sort of a description of, uh, of systems in the sense that he tried to create a, a model which would unify the, the biological systems as well as the human-made systems. So he, he wrote his book and called uh, systems technology in the early 1900s. And then, at that time, intellectuals 
intellectuals socialized together. So here we can see Bogdanov, Gorgi, and Lenin entertaining themselves with, with the chess play. And perhaps they were designing the system of the Soviet Union at the time. <coughs> Similar uh, general systems approach was taken by from Bertha Lanfi. He, he called his theory general system theory. He published these uh, ideas a little bit later. So that was the idea that we could have a unified framework to describe systems. The word operations research was first coined on or introduced by Patrick Blackett uh, in the Great Britain. And uh, they were planning the tactics in anti-submarine warfare in World War II. And that was sort of the, considered to be the beginning of this, this field. At the time, uh, efficiency was important. The optimization in economics, economy, economies and economics uh, was uh, a key interest. Uh, the Soviet system was a system which was optimized. So we got uh, Leonid Kantorovic uh, in the field. Uh, he got the Nobel Prize. Uh, George Danzig is a very important figure because he introduced this uh, simplex method uh, in linear programming. And this particular tool is extremely widely used in, in all kinds of applications, even today. Then we wanted to start to understand the human rationality and human decision making. We have uh, pioneers John von Neumann, Oscar, Oscar Morgenstern, and John Nash. This uh, area developed the theory of games and utility theory, which is sort of an axiomatic uh, description of, uh, of rational choice. And these works have been the basis for modern economic theory today. Then came the, the concept of cybernetics, and it was introduced by <coughs> Norbert Wiener. So it included communication and control. So dynamic effects were included. So in many places, you see the word uh, cybernetics. Operations research itself didn't uh, take off until in the mid-1950s uh, by the pioneers West Churchman, Russell Ackoff. The book Introduction to Operations Research was, of course, mathematical. But later on, both of these, uh, these pioneers started to emphasize that math OR is not mathematics only. It's about problem solving. And you have to take into account the process and the people involved in the problem solving. In the 1960s, the dynamic uh, <coughs> development came into the picture. Jay Forrester from MIT uh, introduced the modeling language or modeling tools called system dynamics. It, uh, it uh, in my interpretation, was intended to bring uh, this dynamic uh, system modeling to the wider, wider fields of application, including social phenomena and, uh, and not only engineering things. So this, this group has then resulted in, in many important uh, scholars, as well as Peter. <laughs> One of the <clears throat> first times uh, mankind stopped into the dynamics of, a, of a, the environmental system. So Rachel Carson published this uh, famous book, The Silent Spring, in already in 1962. So the point was that you can't sort of uh, uh, forget that the, everything is connected. So pesticides in the food chain, if you put pesticides in the field, it might end up uh, in your own body or in the bird. And this uh, uh, general concern on, on the dynamics of, uh, in the big picture was uh, followed then by Global modeling, many of you have not been even born at this time. The limits to growth, uh, very famous at the time, but then forget, forgotten for a while. And now we are doing basically the same kind of modeling with climate change. So it, it, it's uh, more than 40 years ago when the system dynamics ap approach was used to, to study the sustainability of the global global economy. The Club of Rome was uh, influential at that time, so we are sort of reinventing the global modeling now with the climate change. When you are <coughs> modeling, you are, you are simulating, you are optimizing, but then eventually you have to make decisions. And when you have decision-making situations, it's often so that you have conflicting uh, criteria. You have uh, 
beauty and cost, or you have all kinds of things, then you need to do balancing. And uh, this kind of uh, multi-criteria uh, decision-making world is, uh, we can say that it started from the work of uh, Howard Rafe. It's, uh, it's making, making the decision theories applicable to, to practical decisions. He's 90 years old. We just met him last week. He was also the first director of YASA, which is the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis. And uh, that institute was uh, created in the midst of Cold War, idea being that uh, when we put the researchers together solving uh, global problems uh, from east to west, perhaps that would uh, expand uh, sort of the goodwill also to the political field. The next step I could see is that we start to use systems uh, methodologies in a sort of a less uh, technical way. You can structure problems with systems, systems uh, uh, thinking. And, uh, with these insights, you can actually gain quite a bit uh, without doing any computations. Of course, you can continue from there on to computations. So Peter Checkland and Peter Senger. Peter's book, The Fifth Discipline, has uh, has reached uh, huge audiences, in particular in, in management, uh, leadership uh, uh, worlds, and uh, it, it has become a cornerstone in, in, the, in the field. So what are, what are we having today? We need to act. We have enough tools. We have all kinds of methods. So we have to develop uh, systems approaches to sustainability. We, we can create better social systems. We can manage systemic risks in environment, in, in financial sectors. We have huge computational power, which is being used in systems problems today. We can analyze big data. And uh, personally, we hopefully start to act more with systems intelligence. We'll hear more about this later today. So if we look at the, what's happening uh, locally here, so. The, the laboratory was established in 1984. The pioneers here, here in the, at, the, at the time, the Helsinki University of Technology, Olli Lokki was my predecessor. He was sort of the, the father, of, father of operations research in Finland. Uh, Hans Bloomberg was in systems theory, and uh, Sampo Ruth was uh, developing industrial uh, operations research. The Finnish Operations Research Society has been relatively small but active, and here's a lineup of a recent uh, honorary chairman, Jyrki, is sitting here. And <laughs> so when you look at the, at the methodology's impact on other disciplines, so these are alumni from our uh, programs, and uh, the, the different disciplines where they have ended as professors shows that the the kind of uh, methodology that uh, we develop and, and, and use is so applicable in many different fields. You can see economics, management science, evolutionary biology, energy technology, computer science, forestry, finance, and evolutionary ecology. So modeling the ev evolution has been a real hot topic, and, uh, and people who have these skills have been finding good positions in the world. So the current uh, set of uh, professors, what we have is uh, here, myself, Harri Ehtam, who is going to be the next speaker, Ahti Salo, the following speaker, and then Kai Virtanen and Enrico Bartolini. Esa Saarinen was with us uh, for a while, but now he's uh, with the Department of Industrial Engineering and Management, but he's continuing working with our systems intelligence team. So if we look forward, Nobody can really challenge that uh, mankind's greatest challenges are systemic in this century. We are just entering the century. But I would uh, want to change the perspective to a positive one. We, we can create systems, and we can live su in systems in a better way. So it's, uh, systems are our friends rather than enemies. So we can flourish with systems, and with these words, I'll leave this floor to the following speakers. Thank you.